Have you ever wondered how many mobile devices? Oh, sorry. Uh, just leave it for the end because we're running out of time. Huh? <laughs> no. Do you know how many mobile devices are there in the market today? I was doing a research a couple of weeks ago, and I was really impressed that there's 7.1 billion devices, and that number is increasing. If we take the fact that there's 8.1 billion population, and young kids and mainly elderly people is not using, that means some, some people in this room might be using at least two mobile phones. At least I have my Android and iOS. As a developer, we have there. But what we use mobile phones for? Usually we search on the internet, we do some browsing, phone calls, this one less and less, to be honest. We are losing that. We listen music, social media, video calls, at least with elderly people, grandpas and stuff. We take pictures, read books, share documents and pictures, do some banking, some shopping, and even we pay. But is that all what we can do with a mobile phone? What if I tell you that we could detect your post inside this room just by using the Wi-Fi signal? Every time, not for this amount of people, that is quite huge, but if it's four people in a 20 square meters room and you move out, with the Wi-Fi we could be knowing where you are positioning inside that. What if we could do advanced biometrics? How we could do real-time health data tracking of yourself? Or even better, what if I could my physical identity in the network? And using biometrics, I can remove user and password from my favorite applications. Let's say I want to pick money out from a cash machine. I just identify my national ID. It's already embedded in the mobile. And I get my cash out. Even though we have augmented reality modeling, you know, people is now very fan of cyber trucks, but in Europe it doesn't fit in the garage. So you could scan your garage lot and see if it really fits or not. But we are already doing things like that. Uh, for example, this is, I was shopping and getting a unicorn sofa in my home office. So you can place it around and play and see how much it's going to cost. So there are many, many things. And something that a lot of people is talking about nowadays is artificial intelligence. What if we turn our mobile device into our personal assistant? There's a lot of things we can do. And you might be asking, well, gee, where we can start with? This is going to be our playground. Most mobile phones come with different sensors. Depends on the brand and the manufacturer and how much money you spend. But let's start with accelerometer, no? It measures the accelerometer, the acceleration in the three-fourths dimension. Usually, this one helps for step counting. Gyroscope, how you rotate, sensor motion, augmented reality. The magnetometer is the compass, so helpful for navigation, maps, and stuff. Proximity sensor, nobody writes on this one, but when you call on phone and you drop off the display, just in case you don't touch, that's the proximity sensor helping there. Ambient light, so you don't burn your eyes and you adapt to what's the brightness surrounding. But we have also GPS, navigation, um, putting the coordinates on your pictures when you take so we can track where you took that picture, for example. Barometer, if you like hiking or climbing, it gives altitude and weather. And LIDAR, which is a laser sensor that hits objects, you get back and it starts drawing 3D maps. So quite useful for augmented reality and, and other things. And we can use the communication technologies that we have in our mobile phone, like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, 6G, that is coming in 2030. And we always use the camera as an input device, mainly for biometrics. It's going to come really handy. What's our playground today? So this is how it looks. I have my mobile phone, and I will share later by the end a QR code that you will see live metrics from my phone. We'll get those sensors, put it out. It's going to, ooh, it's, sorry. It's going to hit an IoT gateway. And we're going to put all that information inside our core platform. You can choose whatever your favorite cloud provider is. In this case, we're using IoT Core, and each sensor is hidden to a specific IoT rule. And then I'm going to put all that in a collector called IoT Sidewise. You can do time series database, whatever, and connect it to Grafana. There are a few other things, components in the picture, mainly the Kinesis one. I don't have the integration done on Grafana, but you can embed the video, and we could be showing all the people sitting here today with us. How do we start with this? Well, we need mainly four things. Connect the device, send the data, collect, and do something with it, right? So if we start with connecting, um, we usually define what we call thing, 
Internet of Things, to identify a device so we can have serials of attributes already on that. So anytime we define that attribute, we have already pre-populated values that we can just go and fill. But mainly what you need is to create a certificate and a policy. The policy to let us talk to the cloud platform, the certificate to authenticate us, so we create the secure connectivity. Then we need to configure our device, which we're going to do a JavaScript on Node.js. I'll show the file now. And then connect over MQTT. The cool thing is that we have 3.11 spec and 5.0. And it doesn't matter if you send on 3.11, receive on 5.0, or send 5.0, receive 3.11. It will work handy. Yeah? So first of all, I want to create with simple command. It's going Grafana con. Then you see that's also a demo thing. We get an output that is what we're going to use. The thing name and the ID identifier, that's how we're going to specify this mobile phone. Huh? Later on, we create the keys and certificate. Here you have your private key. And this is the file we're going to use on the mobile phone. We're mainly building the dependencies and the modules with MQTT and file system. Then we're going just to get the broker that is the endpoint of my IoT platform and change with the thing name that we just got from the previous command and also the certification file and the private key. With all that info and setting up that, we're going to connect to the endpoint. It will just drop down here. Connect to the broker with all those options, port 883, file system, certificate, and so on. The thing is that we're going to send this on JSON format. So we have there some labels already, the accelerometer, gyroscope, and stuff like that. Once we get all this information, and I'm going to store and collect it in what I told sidewise, it's going to be an asset model that I'm going to have the serial number of the phone and a set of measurements. Right now it's only 18, so it's barometer, gyroscope, altitude, and all those things, but you could add Wi-Fi, uh, battery status, many, many other things. That's how it looks in the back end. What does a user on the front end? I mean, I'm not good on that part, but from a user perspective, I have my mobile phone, and I just create using infrastructure as a code, all the services I need, and it gives me two links, a QR code, and the link for a dashboard that we have predefined there. What we are going to do is with the QR code, I'm going to connect the mobile phone. I'm going to link so we can start sending all our sensor information. Right now, as you can see, I only have the accelerometer there. It enables the camera. Click. It takes a few seconds. I tried to speed up for the, the demo there. And we are connected. Once you see it, it gets back to the sensors. And now I'm going to watch in my dashboard. I have two ones for the metrics that we have from the sensors. The other one is Wi-Fi, battery, and stuff like that. So far, I only have enabled accelerometer. So that's the information you will see in the screen. And you need to push the bottom. That's for security also. Huh? Just when you enable, it will start publishing the info up there. The script is constantly sending and publishing the topics with the IoT rules that we just defined. Here's the GPS location. This is one of the trips, so you know in which hotel I was staying a few weeks ago. But it comes down. Let's put the altitude also to get where we are, 95 meters. And I'm going to switch now to see the other metrics from my mobile phones. That's why we use the Wi-Fi signal to get the dense pose inside the room. So I can see the strength, battery level, if I'm charging or not, and if it's connected, and the CPU utilization. You can build this as you want. You can merge everything into a single dashboard, or you can put it in multiple. So now we have our data in the cloud. Let's visualize this with Grafana. In AWS, you have two ways. And Faisal show earlier. One is you deploy your virtual machine. When it boots up, you install the dependencies with the script and Grafana. Or you let someone else manage the infrastructure. In my case, I prefer someone to manage on my behalf. So I'm going to use the Grafana dashboard. I just link it there so it shows up and I open another tab. Sorry, I'm the guys of tabs. And once I pull it there, there's a workspace. Let's create the Grafana con 2024. 
Version 9.4, you had a deep dive today on 11. Hopefully, our service team will upgrade this to let you run the latest version. You can have it uh, SSO or SAML. I just checked SAML because I want to show how you integrate this with Okta from a developer perspective when you sign. You choose the data sources. You go by default with everything or the ones you're really using. And then the notification system that it's already there. And with all this, you click. And then a few seconds later, it will create the workspace where I'm going to take the first portion, that is the identifier, and use that in Okta. So when you connect to Okta, which I already have the Manage Grafana integrated, I just edit the way I sign on inside Grafana. And what I'm going to do once I edit is put the workspace there and ensure that it's in the region where I already deploy the Manage Grafana. Once it's there, I will copy the metadata URL because we need to finish the installation on the other side. So now we link to have this authentication. If you go down, it says complete setup. You put it, and I'm going to define for the demo just a user type called admin. You may have uh, network, firewall, security, different groups. And once you get the whole thing, it will pop up different windows. So let's go there. There it goes, sign with SAML. We get it, comes by the in dark, and to be opposed to my previous colleagues, I will do it light, just switch into a brighter. When you get old, you need more lights. Now the thing is, let's connect the plugin. They showed previously that you have many there. I'm gonna check the IoT sidewise. That is the one we want to install. Click the bottom, it's there. Now what I'm going to do is create a user with access and admin role that can use this IoT service and whatever I have in my infrastructure. So I have an access key and a secret key in the default region. People usually forget about that. Put it in the region where you have your resources deployed. Otherwise, you will not see anything. And with all that, I can start building my dashboard. The dashboard you will see it comes with IoT sidewise. And let's start adding altitude. And you will see this is from the collector that we had previously. The identifier will be the ID that we have for that device. And as soon as we get things there, it will start running. You need to refresh, so I will create another one. The barometer, for example, get the property values. We set the mobile asset that we have, and we create the pin. We could be adding, adding up to many. You can automate the whole thing, by the way. Huh? I'm showing this as a demo, but you could go and automate the 18 measures and have automatically a nice dashboard and don't spend two hours building this. Huh? Once we get it, one more, it's X, Y, and Z. You just refresh and you start seeing data that it's pulled. And this was a short one showing how to do it instead with IoT sidewalk with a, a time stream database where you can connect it and then already we have the whole information collected and just look for CPU. If you're doing measuring, like all the people inside this room was the CPU of all your mobiles, I could use this service to really measure and see the impact out there. So, time to scan. If you can scan the code, and I will show here, if I didn't close the app, Where's G, IoT sensors. You see something there? Which, by the way, now you know where I live because that's my home. Please. Okay, so you will see the accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer, my battery status, and the location. It should appear here where we are today. Start shaking and moving the phone. You should be seeing on your mobiles the dashboard all the values coming up and down. Think of all the applications you can use by pulling out sensors from the mobile. Augmented reality, even adding something more to the connector. You can create new solutions, and we remove this kind of obsolescence that we find on mobile phones, and we can reuse it for more and long time. You guys are seeing something in the dashboard? No? Oh, really? Let me remove one second. Let me go in and scan to see if it works. 
Probably was the Wi-Fi that was activated there. Quick connect. Yeah, it's quite slow, even the 5G network, huh? Accept. Oh, yeah, it's still connecting, huh? Well, I leave it connected for the whole day so you guys can follow and see where I am in this building and, and locate. We also have a couple of things there that if you're really interested, there's the, another QR code. This is live on Rafana Sandbox. It's a a digital twin model of a industry where you can see the video and the metrics and you can also play around with that one. Hopefully that one launch better than this one. Yeah, it's showing not connected. Let me see why. It should be there. Huh? And that's all what I was going to present you today. Huh? I hope I had a bit more time, but thanks very much. And that one. <laughs>